So have you ever had that difficult client that wanted to list their house for a lot of money over the asking price? This is how you fix it. So we've all had that one client that was really difficult. You set them down, you kind of went over some numbers. You asked them, hey, what number do you feel comfortable at listing your house at? And then they give you this atrocious number that knocks you back. And are thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be on the market for a long time. And it's not going to be good. So it's important that we get this and we kind of conquer this mountain. Because we all know if you've had them, and we've all had them, they sit there. And they sit there and they sit there. And then there's frustration from the seller. Well, why isn't my house selling? Well, it's something that you're doing. It's not the price. There's something that you're not doing. In some cases, that might actually be the scenario what's going on. But we all know it when it's because of the price. There's a general rule off the healthy market that I tell my team is we should have somewhere between seven and eight showings the first week the house comes on the market. If we don't have that many showings, it's either not a good area or the house is way out of price. And I will use that as like my indicator with my team. I share that with my client. So I'll tell my client, hey, listen, this house is going to be way overpriced. And if we don't get the activity, we need to be prepared to move quickly with the price of this house and lowering it and doing some other things. But maybe there's some things that you can do before that so it doesn't even get to that point. One thing is you have to be educated about that property. If there's any uncertainty in your mind of what that price is and where this house is really going to sell at, it's going to be hard for you to convince me otherwise as a seller that my house isn't worth that. So how do we do that? Obviously our comps. We're going to show them what's sold. And we have to have a healthy understanding because a lot of times this will happen on a house that's the big house. You don't ever want to be the big house in the area because we know that the big house doesn't carry the same price per square foot as the medium house and the small house and the price just drops. So understand that rationale on how the square footage as it goes bigger the price goes down on the square footage and how that affects things and be able to articulate that well with your seller and having the materials printed there so you can make notes and mark and everything and walk them through it. So make it an involved process if you already kind of think this is going to be a problem. Make it an activity with your seller. Okay, hey, let's look at this one. And what you're doing is you're creating a CMA with them. Okay, so they have some involvement with it. All right, we had this house here on First Street. First Street was this many square feet, and it sold for this, this many days in the market, and this was a price per square foot. And then work down there to your next house. This one did this, this one did this. Okay, now that we've looked at three or four or five of these comps, Let's do this with your house now. Okay, so your house matches this, your house has this. Okay, and judging off of this information, this is what your house should go for. Now, they've worked through it logically in their head. And hopefully we were able to yank out that emotion or whatever it was inside them that thought they had to have this. Another thing we can do with this is figure out how much money are they really, because we're all gonna do a net sheet, how much money do they have to walk away with here? Are we having to go for that high price because we have to have this much money to be able to move? Or do we have to have this high of a price to cover some fees and different things going on? Because if that's the case, maybe it's not the best idea that we're selling the house. So another selling point with this is really hitting hard with the days on market. Okay, how long do you want this house to be on the market? Because an aggressive price house will be one that will get more bits possibly, will get more showing, some more activity, maybe we get up higher than that number. So the next thing to really think about here on dealing with this person that's gonna maybe be a difficult person, let's prepare this person. Maybe they're not being extremely difficult and they're not hard to talk to, not yet, but we want to sell them the fact that we need to prepare this person to lower the price. So let them know, educate them that this house is gonna age on the market. And when it ages, it's like four or five, six pages down on houses that are for sale that are not showing on the first screen when people are doing the real searches for homes for sale. The next thing is we really need to tell them if we don't have this many showings by this day or we don't have an offer by this day, you need to go ahead and have it lined out, 5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000. 
that we're gonna drop this house on this day if it hasn't sold. And if it hasn't sold past that, then we're gonna drop it by this number again later on past that. So they're never easy. We dread them, we want the listings, but we dread them when we get them. I know I've been there many times, my team has been there, but just know, stay positive, be creative in ways to get it down. You know, maybe it's that you have other agents go in there and leave feedback that the price of the house is overpriced. Those are little things you're getting from other people that's validating what you're saying. Remember to hit the subscribe button. I hope that this was helpful to you and that you enjoyed it. Also on the subscribing, hit that little bell. That bell will let you know, give you notifications whenever we have new videos that come out. More ways for you to be a better realtor, more educated, get more money and more listings and more clients. All right, have a great day guys.